understand now that okay there was this challenge in the house so you decide to uh, look for a way to make a contribution both to your family and also to the people around you uh, all right now if you go to the united kingdom just like in many other uh, european society or in the west as it were there are a lot of people who really have some challenges i'm talking of uh, the youth in this case because that is where we are going to spend most of our conversation today because you work with them uh, so this idea of finding a value finding a purpose for your life is something that is a kind of um, that is very important because most most of the young people out there do not do not find the purpose so they are sort of lost sort of no i interviewed uh, a lady uh, in the uk also who work in this area uh, she also have a program where she deal with a lot of uh, uh, young adolescents who are sort of um, having some challenges on how to find their way around. And of course, we can take this argument to many dimensions, to many angles we want, no? starting from uh, having a role model. Because when if you live in a society where you don't have a role model, somebody that looks like you, that is out there that you need to look like, uh, in this way you need to begin to find the path that the person has journey before so that you can also be like the person then it become really challenging for you and of course this is easy to understand if we are living in the west this is not our typical society you know we are sort of stranger here and because that is the situation it becomes harder even for our children that are growing up because they find it difficult to find a role model yeah. so help me understand this there in the uk how do you see the youth around you Tell me about that. Then we are going to understand, understand what exactly you do within the youth program. Yeah, this is this is the field where I smile the most. Um, so what we aim to do is let me talk about changing the narratives. We often so I work for a, a CBGC, um, which is the Coventry Boys and Girls Club. Um, so I'm sort of the senior youth uh, leader here on this side, and we work with the court system. So they would have young people that would be on the verge of going to jail. And the judge would say, hey, we're going to put you with Howard because we believe there's change in you, but we need to find it. So what I then do is I meet the young person where they're at. If they come and meet me and their mindset is, you know, I, I, I want to be indulging with, with violence or knife crime, I don't tell them off and say, change that right now. It doesn't work like that. What I do is I meet that person where they're currently at so I tap into their world instead of them tapping into my world because it's not about me, it's about them. Let me understand what it, what is going through this young person's mind. And ultimately, it'll be, uh, it'll be it's, um, love that they often are lacking, love and compassion and a voice just to, and an ear to, 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 to listen to. Um, so we incorporate boxing, um, musical production, um, life skills, um, Sorry, is that still on? Sorry about that. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go. No problem, yeah. no problem. Life <laughs> skills and these sort of things to sort of meet them where they're at and to open more doors of opportunity, then getting them into employment. Let's start with how the project started, the one that you are working, you are working with now. Tell us about it. Just explain the project itself to us. What, what really is it? Yeah, um, it was my manager, actually, um, Leah. She created a, a project called The Mac Project. And The Mac Project is all about music and change. Um, so with this, we work with young people on an individual basis. We also go into schools, uh, we do group discussions. Where we go in, we do 50% practical, 50% theory. So when the kids hear that we're coming in, they go, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, we're doing music. So we're like, yeah, we're doing music, but we're also gonna learn life skills. So when we go in, we talk about music, we create music. So we get a lot of rappers, singers, poets, um, and we use music as the main substance. But a lot of these young people often talk about, you know, having millions and having, you know, a massive Bentley and, you know, wanting to be the next P. Diddy. And we then talk to them about, okay, what's marketing? Okay, what's, what, how much do, what revenue do record labels make? You know, what's a, pub, a publishing deal? And it's these things that we, as I said, we meet them where they are, but we add in a bit more, you know, knowledge so they're understanding of how industry works. It's pretty cool. Mm. Thank you for that, uh, Richard. You see, um, 
this podcast, actually where this po podcast is coming from, is a research project that I carried out here in Italy, in Northern Italy, where I live, for between 2013 to 2015, actually more than that. Uh, okay, that is, a, that is a day that we basically gather the data. Yeah. Where we are trying, we're trying to understand the life of the Africans here in, in Italy. How did they come here? What are they doing here? What is the relationship between them and the local people? So some of the things that we also find out is this complaint, uh, sometimes this challenge that people have, that is discrimination. Okay, we cannot deny that all these are there. But we also realize that, yes, people, we have all these challenges, but we also have resources among us. We, we are not empty-headed. And whether you are looking at people who just come from, I don't know, from Somalia, from Nigeria, from Ghana, from Ivory Coast, these are human beings that have already been formed before they left their country. Yeah. And so we cannot just end it here with the fact that, okay, we are foreigners, so we are going to be suffering all our life. Why don't we sit down and try to help each other? Those yeah. who know can teach those who do not know. That is actually the basis behind uh, our e-learning platform. So I really like it very well when we are trying to tap into this resource it makes me very happy you know mm -hmm. so now what i'm trying to drag out here uh richard is when you talk with these young people what did they tell you are some of the things that push them to becoming sort of near rebel as it were you know but what lead them to that situation where they are in between going to j or going to reformation help me oh. with that Often the common denominator is um, lack of father figure, lack of um, compassion and lack of understanding. Um, a lot of the young people I've, I've come from single parents. Um, they, and, you know, they, well, one thing I do always identify is that they're very close to mom. They, they talk a lot about their moms, even though there's this aggressive side, you know, but we need to be careful when we say aggressive because it's not aggressive. It's just that's their element of showing, showing love almost. Um, and, and that's that's one thing that I would say massively is the lack of having that that male role model and understanding. I read a book um, yesterday. It's called Cry Like a Man. And this book talks about how sort of males are, you know, we're, we're kind of not steered towards crying. And we build this defense mechanism. And with the young people I work with, their defense mechanism might be, you know, smashing things or getting into fights or carrying a knife. Um, and it's about sort of changing that but understanding 